Well, hey crafters, as you probably know, Halloween is in just a couple of days and some of us, as in myself, are not quite done with our costumes yet. So I've got a last few details because that's what I love about working in costumes is I love the detail. That's what I feel like really makes a good costume. So one of the details that I'm going to be working on is I have this belt that I got at a thrift store and I'm going to be turning this into Black Widow's belt with her belt buckle. So the two biggest challenges I have right now are one, I've got to make the belt buckle and then two, I've got to figure out how to attach it on here. So I've got a couple different ideas. I'm going to show you what I'm going with and show you my process for making the Black Widow's belt buckle. So first of all this belt there's this side which I don't know how well you can see on the camera but it's kind of like fuzzy and then this side's a more like flat shinier leather kind of sheen and so I want this to be on the outside but this is actually the outside of the belt this side here. So and I run this through here it's not going to be able to buckle like it's supposed to because I'm going to be having it inside out. So my buckle is going to need to actually help hold it in place. So for my buckle, the way I'm going to design it is think of it like a loop that will feed onto here and I can slide it up and down wherever I need to position it and then it'll have her like hourglass symbol on the front of it. So I'm going to be using Sculpey Clay today to make these. I actually have four colors here even though the belt buckle itself is in white, red, and black and the reason is because I don't have much of these colors so I'm going to make a frame with this silver because I've got a bunch of it and then I'm going to add the colors and the detail on top of it. And when I make the frame, I want it to be able to slide on and off. So I'm going to also make this out of the grain. And then just to help me bake it a little better, so that way while it's baking it doesn't collapse or anything. And then when it gets out of the oven it won't fit on here. I just took some tin foil. It's safe to bake with the clay. So I just kind of wrapped it around here to make sure it's tall enough. You can see it coming out on either side. So that way if I use this as a basic frame, that it'll be able to come on and off. So I went ahead and made this to the size of my belt, just a little bit bigger, so I've got some room. And I'm gonna set my belt aside and get to work on making the actual buckle. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm gonna be starting with my gray because that's what I'm gonna make the foundation out of. And as always, condition your clay. It'll make baking it go a lot better. So to condition it, just a little piece off and start mushing it around your hands until it's nice and soft and is a good consistency. And then we'll start shaping it. All right, so I've got my piece of clay here that's nice and soft, very well conditioned. And I'm gonna take a bit of this and I'm gonna make the basic loop that's gonna go around the belt and I'm gonna use this to act as a frame. So to do that, I'm just going to roll it out into a log like so. And I'm gonna kind of just flatten it around my frame here. And you can go as thick or as thin as you want with this. I'm probably gonna Spread it out a little more with my fingers here. And this you're not really going to see, so it doesn't have to look that pretty. Just you want it to be thick enough so that way it'll be a sturdy hold on the belt. And I'm going to fold it over like so. If you want to double check it, you can kind of pull it off your frame gently. Compare it to the belt. Because I want to remember I want it to be able to slide on and off of here. So that looks like it's going to work. I think my frame's going to work well. Let's just have that there. And now I'm going to make the bigger frame with the rest of my gray clay. And I don't have to make this as thick as I made this like hook piece because I'm going to have other colors going on top of it. So I'm just going to smush this out, spread it kind of thin. And the important thing here for me is since this belt already has a buckle, I want my Black Widow belt buckle to cover this. I don't want this one to be seen. So if I think about this... As I mentioned, this belt is actually going to bring it the wrong way out. So I need this to be covered up. So I'm going to have to go fairly big. So I may need to pinch off some more clay to get this done. But I just want to start by spreading out my clay. You can roll it. I'm not going to bother rolling this one just because I'm going to be adding other colors on top of it. But get it to the size you want and then I'm going to cut it in an hourglass shape. Alright, so now I've got my basic hourglass shape, I am definitely going to refine this a little bit more. I'm just trying to make sure it'll be big enough to cover the belt buckle that's already on the belt, and yes it is. So now I'm just going to kind of sharpen up the look. Just flatten the top off, flatten off the bottom. 
and make these hourglass curves a little bit nicer. Just going to gently trace it first and then I'll actually cut it out. And if it helps you, if you're having a hard time freehanding it or trying to get it symmetric, you can always print out a template from online so that you can set on, the, on your clay that you've spread out and then cut the clay out in the correct shape. I'm just going to rough it because I'm going to come in a little bit more on this side here. And I think I like that shape. So that's going to be the base for my shape. And now the fun part is I just got to layer the other colors on top of it and that'll make it sturdier. We're going to attach it on here bake the whole thing. But what I also am going to mention, what's really cool what I'm going to do with this, because I was kind of short on some of my clay colors, I did find this pack of clay that I'm going to use for my white color. And it's a little off-white. You might be like, okay, that looks a little weird. But it's glow-in-the-dark clay. Like, how cool is that? And this stuff goes really well. So I guess it's almost like a safety feature, but then it also like will look super cool um, when I'm out at night in the costume. So the uh, same as I did before, I'm going to start by conditioning the clay, spreading it out into a sheet, and then I'll cut it so that way it'll be about the same size as this, wherever the color needs to go, and then I'll just stack them up and bake it. All right, so my clay is conditioned, and to go ahead and get it out into the flat sheet, I'm gonna kind of partition it off, because the way the hourglass looks is it's like an outline of white and then red and then a black hourglass in the center. So I'm going to start by just kind of pinching a piece off that I'm going to spread out. This I'll cut into the top up here, pinch another piece off for the bottom, and I'll spread this out. That'll be the bottom, and then pieces for the sides. So I'm not going to even bother rolling out a whole sheet. Besides, I don't have enough for that. I'm going to start cutting out the, just the sides, and I'll piece it together and stack it onto there. So here's just to give you a better idea of kind of the process I'm doing. I'm just cutting out these pieces that are going to go like this, and then I will assemble all these pieces together just kind of cutting it to be about the right size and thickness. If I have a spot here where it dips down and it's not so smooth, I'll take a little bit of clay and I'll pinch it on there and I'll kind of rework that section. And the nice thing is these pieces can be really thin because we've already got a foundation. So I don't need to worry about how thick or thin they are or how even it is. So I can easily pinch a little bit more there, cut it off, shape it off, make it smoother. Got just a little plastic knife here. I can just kind of press along the side to make it more even and just get it looking really nice. The and top might not seem so bad because you just cut out the flat top and a flat bottom and then angle it at the sides but what about these sides here? It's a curve. How do you shape that? You might be trying to cut it a curve but instead of doing that just start by having a piece that's straight on both sides and cut just kind of an angle here at the bottom and then line it up along the bottom here and just gently let it curve back and just kind of play with the clay like that. You can kind of see where you need to slice it off. You know, just put a little groove there. And then you can take it off of there, cut where you made that groove, and then just work it onto the larger piece. And of course, if you find that there's some gray sticking out, you could always reshape the side. Just gonna push along here. Just to make sure all the gray is underneath the colors that I want to be seen to create a nice edge here. I'm going to work in right here a little bit more. Use your fingers or a tool or whatever you've got that you're working with. Just kind of make those edges neat. And of course, if you wanted to, you could always take the knife and make a whole fresh new cut on the side if you want to make it really crisp. That's always an option too. But that's just to give you some pointers on how to get those side curved pieces in. I'm going to work on the other side and then we'll move on to the next All right, color. so now it's on to the next color, the red. And what's cool about this is I've been keeping these outer edges pretty crisp, but these inner ones aren't looking so great, but that's okay because the red one, I can have it overlap with a nice crisp edge to cover up that not so crisp edge of the white. And then for the red, the inner not so crisp edges will be covered up by the crisp edges of the black. And so it'll all kind of even out and help it get a more polished finished look. But I'm going to start by conditioning my red clay, and then I'm just going to start, you know, pinch off a little piece, roll it out, and then just kind of flatten it down and cut it just like I've been doing. 
So here we go, I'm starting to fill in it with the red. And also I'll mention this, I'm doing it with this method where I have the gray as the background and then I'm adding in these other pieces because I'm low on clay and the colors that I need and I don't wanna use a ton of clay for this project. But you could always, if you wanted to, cut the hourglass shape out in white and leave it filled in in the center and then stack an hourglass in the red and then in the black instead of doing just the edges. I'm doing just the edges just so I can save on how much clay I'm using. But another option, of course, is to stack an hourglass in each of the colors. Just make the hourglasses get smaller. I just chose to do it this way because of the amount of clay I have. So with the red on the inside, I'm doing similar to what I did on the outside. I'm just kind of pinching it out laying it on here and then I'm making nice little grooves with where I need to cut. Taking it off of there, I'm going to cut it at my grooves and then I can nestle it right in here. You can see that the red's just about filling up the inside anyways. Take my tools here along the edge, just kind of really fill in those gaps there nicely. I'm gonna make sure these edges here line up really well. I'm just gonna play with the clay and just manipulate it until it looks the way I want it to. Also, it's important that every now and then pick it up and just gently pinch the air out because you don't wanna end up with air bubbles between your layers. So before I go and add the black on here at the end, I'm going to just work along and pinch out any air bubbles. I already did that with the white layer, but I haven't done it with the red yet, so I'll show you doing with the red, just kind of working from the center of a piece, pinch, pinch, pinch gently. You don't want to pinch too hard because you don't want to spread out your clay, but just pinch it enough to work the air bubbles out. And last of all, I need to condition a little bit of my black clay. Okay, I'm going to spread this out right over here, see if it's about, yeah, that'll be about big enough. So I'm just going to hold it next to the side here, cut the top off. So if I set that there, I'm going to cut the bottom about here. I need to stretch it out a little bit more. Cut the bottom off. Let's set this on top to make sure it's still going good. I'm going to stretch it just a little bit longer, so I'm just literally going to take the clay and just pull it. Of course, I'll need to neaten up these edges. Just kind of, I'm not actually cutting it, I'm just kind of taking this flat straight edge here to kind of mush the clay up itself to make it flat. And then I just got to cut out the nice hourglass shape. Before I add it on, I'm going to play with it some more, get it to look exactly the way I want it to. And then I will add this final piece on there, and it'll be time for baking then. I like the way that looks. And I also like stacking the black on top, because it just adds a little more texture to the belt buckle. It gives a little more dimension from this way, because there's a little bit of a gap here, because I didn't have anything underneath it. So I'm just going to make sure that the front stays flat instead of the front having the divot. And there we go. That is the front of the buckle. So I'm going to attach it onto here and bake it. And when I attach it, it's very important to make sure that these stay bonded together really well. So I may even grab some wire and run it through these and into here just to help hold it extra well. You can also take like a toothpick or the tip of your knife or tool or whatever and kind of push the clay together so that way it bonds really well for baking. Okay, I've got that sealed together pretty well, and I'm going to go bake this in the oven. All right, and now it's out of the oven, so and it's let, I've let it cool, so I've just got to carefully pop this tin foil out of there and check it out. So let's go ahead and slide this onto the belt, and also it's going to slide on really nicely. But I went and I slid my belt buckle here, my big emblem, onto the belt. And I'm going to slide this through because remember I'm doing the belt backwards. And then to hold it in place, this is going to slide right over this buckle here. And that's going to hold everything firmly in place for me. Keep the belt on. And then I've got this tail end here because it's a little longer. I'll probably use a little bit of like electrical tape to keep it taped down. But it's really cool because it also glows in the dark. I'll show you that. All right, so there it is. I'm going to shut the lights out and we'll see if the camera will pick it up that it's glowing. Well, it keeps blowing in and out a little bit, but hopefully you can get the idea that it is glowing. Um, it looks really cool with it glowing. But here we go. Now I've got my belt buckle made. I've got a top. I did get a sponsor for my pants. So those I that means my parents paid for it. If you haven't watched my haul video, go click up there and watch it. And that'll make a lot more sense. But yeah, my outfit's finally coming together, and I can't wait to wear it next Tuesday.